30. Okay. Okay, we're coming in. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this is uh, what's the story with Maria? This is episode six, and uh, it's a very special episode for lots of reasons. One, it was so hot today; it was ridiculous. I got stuck on the train for an hour. I had a meeting uh, with my boss. I had an audition. Then I got stuck on the train. Then here I am, and uh, we've set up everything up. The good news is my special guests and beautiful, beautiful friends are here, and it's going to be a great episode. And thank you for joining us already. And we're going we're gonna to get to everybody in a minute. Let me see. Already Dom Giovanni has joined us. Rory Taggart up in Canada. Thank you, Rory. George Fernandez, John Pandish, Gladys Mercado, Kimberly Davis, and Jason Peck are already on board. So... This is what I'm going to start with. Usually I have my guests sitting with me right away, but I'm going to start myself tonight. And I'll tell you why. Um, today is my mom's birthday. Uh, uh, um, August 22nd is my mom's birthday. My mom is in heaven. She's been in heaven for uh, about almost eight years. And uh, my mom was my favorite person. And my mom is where I learned um, most of the good, kind-hearted things I do, I learned from my mom. Uh, my music I learned from my dad, and uh, that's up. But my mom taught me the day-to-day -day skills about how to navigate in this world and not um, not get in trouble, so to speak. So I want to um, I want to show you a picture of me and my mom when I was a little kid, and I'll tell you why I'm showing you this picture. Now on the radio you can't see it, but it's a black and white picture. I was probably about three or four in this picture. And this, what I'm going to show you now, is a painting that my friend Emily Bruton Schilling did. I wish you could see this on the radio. It's spectacular. I have it on Facebook Live. She made this for me a couple of years back for um, a Christmas gift. And the reason I want to show you this, and I'm going to tell you how to get in touch with her in a minute, is because she is an amazing artist that does lots of different Type some stuff is abstract. Sometimes she uses text. This particular is one of her portraits, and I, you know, when uh, people say, "Oh, if you had a fire in the house and you ran, what would you grab? What would the, be the one thing you'd grab?" This is it. This is my prized possession that I would grab if I ran out of the house in a fire. It's a painting by Emily Bruton Schilling, and uh, if you want to get a hold of her, she is my Facebook friend. But if you want to look at her website, which is really exquisite. It's got a lot of different stuff on there, including an amazing meditation. Emily, uh, you want to go to artandhonor.com. A-R-T-A-N-D-H-O-N-O-R.com. Artandhonor.com. So this is a beautiful painting she made from this picture of me and my mom. Is that amazing? And now she didn't even tell me. She didn't ask for the picture. She got it off of Facebook. That's pretty cool, right? Off of one of my profile pictures. So I wanted to show you that. Now, my mother was born in Italy, as was my dad. She was born in Avellino, Italy, uh, Ariano Espino, to be exact. And uh, this is what my mom looked like when she came to America. She was about 18. It was around 1955, I believe. And she came to Ellis Island um, w with her family. And um, she used to tell me the story that my Uncle Johnny, who was her brother by maybe a year younger than her, my uncle, Johnny woke her up. They were on the boat from Italy, and he came downstairs where they were all sleeping, and he said, get up, get up. Uh, and she said, what are we doing? She, he said, grab a blanket. We got to go on deck because the Statue of Liberty, we're coming up to the Statue of Liberty. And he grabbed my mom, and they both stood there and watched the Statue of Liberty huddled in these blankets that they had on these boats. And my mother said it was the most amazing thing she had ever seen in her life. And when she crossed it, she knew she was free. And my Uncle Johnny said, we're free. 
because they had come from war torn um, Italy was part of all that that World War II right after World War II, and there was no work. There was places were destroyed, and they wanted to get out of there, and they need they deserved a good life. So these my family came over here uh, in 1955, and now this is important that I say this. They did not speak English. Not then. They came over knowing one language, and that was the language of their country. They, um, my grandfather's brother, Joe, uh, my uncle Joe, helped them come over. That's what they would do. Families would come here. They would work really hard. Other families would sponsor their relatives. They would come over. They would work really hard, and they would keep bringing people over. Now, mind you, they went to night school and learned to speak English. They all worked like dogs, and they all had amazing skills, and they, they were grateful to be here. My grandfather kissed, literally kissed the ground he walked on. When he got off the, the boat, he kissed the ground, and he said, thank you. And I think that's very important to remember. It was a long time ago, but it wasn't that long ago. And um, I think those things are important. What my family brought culturally to this country and work ethically to this country is amazing and I'm I'm here because of them so I wanted to thank them for that and um, I'm going to show this picture too this is and for I hope my cousin Joyce and Gina are watching because your grandpa's in here so this is my mom she was probably about six in this picture it's my mom right there and then my uncle Johnny's in the middle my aunt Anna she's little my grandma over here my grandpa Jerry and my uncle Louie he was something to be reckoned with. Joyce, Gina, I mean, uh, yeah, Gina, I hope you're listening. Uh, that's their grandpa. And he was, and these guys were like, oh my God, they worked hard and they built businesses and you didn't want to mess with them. So shout out to all my relatives in heaven. Amazing. My Aunt Anna is still here. My grandma's still here. So we love you. Now, um, a couple years back, I wrote a song while my mother was still alive called My Mother and the Red Sox because I'm from Boston originally, as you know. And um, I wanted to give my mother a Mother's Day present. So this is, I have two CDs, by the way, which I don't know if you guys know about. These are what my CDs look like. And you can get them on my website, mariagentilly.com. You go to my website and you can order this one hard copy. I'll mail it out to you. Or you can order both of these. You can download them right directly from my website, okay? so. Please go and do that. It would make my day uh, if you downloaded some of my songs because I'm actually a pretty good songwriter if I say so myself. So there's a song on here called My Mother and the Red Sox. It's song number one that I wrote for my mom. Uh, and what it's about is, and I think a lot of you people that are maybe a little, you know, my age, a little bit younger, but you get to a point in your life where your parents, they start to get older and you take it, it kind of takes your breath away a little bit sometimes. And for me, that moment was, because I live in New York, but I, I um, am from Boston, so I would go back and visit. And this one particular day, I remember leaving my mom's house and feeling kind of like heavy-hearted, like, geez, maybe I shouldn't have left. You know, maybe I should have stayed and, and stayed here and taken care of my parents, you know. And they were kind-hearted enough to let me go and pursue my dreams, and I, here I am. I do, you know, I live a creative life because they said go and do that but I remember passing Fenway Park and thinking you know what I love living in New York but there's two things I miss and that's my mother and the Red Sox so I wrote this song called my mother and the Red Sox and it's about leaving one place to go to another but missing the things you left behind and it doesn't matter if you're a Yankee fan a Cubs fan whatever it doesn't matter what your team is it's about leaving something behind and I think you'll all identify with it I hope that you will take the time to go to my website and listen to my music because I put a lot of heart into it. So, um, okay, so a shout out to my beautiful mother in heaven. I know she's always here with me and she was just amazing. Let me just show you another thing and talk about it. My mother was more of a patriot than anybody I ever knew and she was from another country. So this is my mother. My mother, every Thanksgiving, which was her favorite holiday, she would dress as a pilgrim. That was her thing. She loves, she'd say, today I am a pilgrim. And I would say, Ma, there's no Italian pilgrimage. She'd say, no, because of today I am. You see? 
and she would make outfits. This is my cousin Jessica Crignali, adorable. Look at now she's an adult, and this is my niece Leah. She would make costumes for them as well, and they dressed as pilgrims. It was my mother's favorite holiday. Ironically, and actually quite beautifully, my mom passed away on Thanksgiving, which was her favorite holiday in 2009. It was as if she chose the day she would go to heaven. So I always felt that that proved to me that my mother was in control of her own destiny. Now, she was a little tiny lady. She was probably about five foot two. She uh, spoke Italian and English and a fair amount of Spanish. Her, a lot of her friends were Spanish. She could make anything from anything. Uh, and she, we always said we were very poor, but we always had food and clean clothes. And I learned to be grateful for those things very early on. So um, appreciate your parents, even if they're pains in the butt, which we can also be. Uh, just uh, and, and just remember to take mental photographs of things and that everyone contributes something to this world that is so important. And it doesn't, you don't have to be famous. You don't have to write a book. You imprint the people in your lives. You imprint on their heart things that they will never forget. So that's my tribute to my mom, who I love so much. And um, with that, let me put my headbuds back on. Um, thank you for listening and indulging me. Okay, so my two guests today are two of the most important people in my life. Um, Catherine Salvio and Judy Mesa. And they're important for different reasons, but they both save my ass on a weekly basis, uh, and they help me out a lot. So I'm going to move over, and uh, Catherine, will you join me? Yes. And Judy, you can join me too if you want. Want to join me too? Yes, please, both join me. I like when both guests are on together. So this is Catherine Salvio. Hi, everybody. And this is Judy Mesa. Come in, Come in yes, more, Judy, so we can see you. I'll move over a little bit. Okay, so Catherine Salvio is one of my best friends ever. She is a, a selfless dynamo. And uh, when I was getting ready to do this show, yeah, I would say, well, it's my show, so I can say that. So uh, when you, I was getting ready to do the show, I was freaking the hell out about the technical stuff. I had no idea how to do it. And uh, Joe Rock said, oh, you know, you just get a you set this up, blah, blah, blah. And because he's done it a million times, and Jimmy, uh, thank God for Jimmy, he's helped. Oh, my God, what would I do without Jimmy? Shout out to Jimmy Bell. So um, Catherine came over. She goes, do you want me to come over and help you? I said, I, I would love that. So she came over. And she and Jimmy set up all the sound and all the stuff. And thank you, Catherine, because I'm broadcasting because of Catherine and Jimmy. I think she would have figured it out. Of I don't think so. <laughs> you don't know me with technology. It's really bad. And this is my honey bunny, Judy. Um, and um, we all are connected for different reasons. So I'm going to stay both are the reason I chose them to be on the show together, besides the fact that they're great friends and they play poker together. And uh -huh. if anything can bring you close, is playing poker. I mean, Judy has kicked her asses more than once. Uh, at, at mine, many times. <laughs> I've lost. I, lo I think I lose every single time. I'm, I told the last time we played poker, can I just hand you $20? Because I, <laughs> I, this is going to take hours and I'm going to lose it anyway. And we play for high stakes. Yeah, we right? play for high stakes because Judy is Cuban. And Cubans, they don't play. <laughs> so I, I, um, I wanted to bring them both on because they are both people that are talented and creative and have done a fair amount of that um, in their lives. And they were people that uh, chose not to go into the business um, of, of show, so to speak, although they're both involved in it behind the scenes, um, like I did. And I find that just as interesting as the people that do decide to go to the into the business and stay in the business. Sometimes what happens is you say, you know what? I don't really want to do this right now, or I have, I'll let them tell their stories. But so Catherine, Catherine Salvio, my friend, what, tell me, did you always want to be an, I know you you were an actor. So did you always want to do that since you were a little kid? Well, I was, uh, I, w I was um, part of a show that my uncle used to put on with my sisters. And uh, he kind of instilled that in us, you know, we had to 
he did the Wizard of Oz, I was the Cowardly Lion, this one was, you know, this one, you know, what my sisters had different parts, and when the family would come over. Now, your uncle, let's let's mention okay, that my, your uncle was my, an actor, right? My uncle was Robert Salvio, and he was a very talented actor, musical comedy, he did, he danced, he sang, he was a great actor, and unfortunately, he never made it big in the business. And but he was on Broadway, right? For one night, he was on Broadway in wow. the musical version of Billy Budd. I hate, I, I, I doubt anybody in your audience. Uh, Do you remember around what year that was? No, I can't remember. I, I am so bad with dates. And uh, but it was a great show. It, it would, it had. Do you remember the Archies? Do of you course. The Archies. The men who wrote for the Archies wrote the music for that Broadway musical, the musical version of Billy Budd. Okay. And Ming Shou Lee did the set, and uh, my uncle was, you know, he was he did some TV, but he never made it big. He always would blame his height. He was a, he was a short Italian and uh, handsome as can be. And he was a dancer as well, right? So he was. Yeah, he, he actually did the National Company of Cabaret in Joel Gray's role as the MC, and he actually made that character the uh, the Nazi type person that it was and how Prince liked it so much when he did the movie, he, he let that aspect of the character be more Nazi than it was in the original Broadway show. Wow. And he was amazing. My cousins and I, uh, Roberta Pacino, shout out to Roberta Pacino. Uh, she and I and my sisters, we'd, we'd walk around, uh, we were in LA, he was doing it in LA at the time, and we'd walk around and say, gee, isn't Robert Salvio great? <laughs> He's an uncle, it. uncle Robbie Salvador. I love Ray. it. Now you yeah. mentioned your cousin um, Roberta, Roberta, and you said you had two uh, two relatives that were in well, the. Roberta's uh, half brother or step brother is Al Pacino. So Al Pacino and my uncle used to hang around, it, uh, you know, in the home, in our home at, around the holidays, and Al, and then when Roberta lived with me in New York. I was just starting to make it. He had just done Panic in Needle Park, and and uh, that was one of his first movies. Yeah, right? my aunt was married to Al's uh, father. And Al's father, Sal Pacino, was my godfather. So then they moved to California. So we didn't see them. Uh, we didn't see them or Al anymore that much until later on in life when Roberta lived in New York. And, uh, you and Roberta were roommates for a while, yeah, right? Yeah, we were roommates, yeah. and we met out on Broadway in 72nd Street, which was Needle Park at the time, and he looked like he had just stepped off the set of Needle Park because he, he had the same kind of outfit as if he took it from wardrobe, and he was walking around, and I said, Al, come on up, come up, come upstairs. So we bought a big bottle of wine. He was drinking at the time, which he stopped doing, and then he came up and he says, Girls, I just made a movie that I think is going to change my life, and it was about father. Do you, uh, okay, how crazy is that? that she had the conversation with Al Pacino, the Al Pacino that we all love. I mean, I'm a huge fan. I know Judy's a huge fan. Huge you, fan. And you actually got to see him I did. speak, right? I got to see him speak um, when I was at, when I was attending uh, the William Patterson University. And then I got to meet him in person when he did China Doll, because Catherine took us all. And, um, and, but I've loved him all my life. He kind of looks like my dad a little bit. So yeah, I kind of loved similar. him. All my all my life. Yeah. You know, I just realized, I, and I did a movie with Al Pacino. <laughs> yeah, you got that right. I, um, so it's so I funny that we all met him at different times, and then because you did a movie, did you didn't know Catherine at the I time? I didn't know Catherine. Right. So here's me in a movie but with Al Pacino called Chinese Coffee. Right. Where uh, I played a bad talent belly dancer. <laughs> yeah. Now let me tell you about this. I have a lot of friends that are amazing dancers, amazing dancers, but. I got this, and they all went to the, the casting, um, the audition. The reason I got it was because I'm not a dancer, and they wanted a belly dancer that was awful. So that's why I got it, because I was really bad at something. How crazy is that story? So I would play the, belly, the bad talent belly dancer opposite Jerry Orbach, who was l the loveliest soul you could imagine. And Al Pacino directed the movie. And it's one of the highlights of my life that I got to spend that day with Al Pacino and Jerry Orbach, and they would keep showing that they call it the dailies when they they video, they uh, film you and then they show you what they just filmed. So Al would say, "Come and look at this. You're so funny. You're so funny." And I thought, "Oh my God, Al Pacino thinks I'm funny. I'm dying here. I'm dying." <laughs> and then he said, "My belly." He kept saying, "My belly dancer. Where is she? What would you like for dinner, my belly dancer?" I said, "I don't know." Uh, 
He's like, do you like sushi? I said, I love sushi. And he ordered it from the best uh, sushi place in New York called Japonica. So I just felt so taken care of by Al Pacino. So shout out to Al. Uh, we, we all are huge fans. Yep. And then we got to see him, right? Yep. Great guy, right? And she, Great gave guy. The, she gave him a copy of that picture. Oh, that's right. So at backstage. He, let, he was so happy to see him. Catherine took us backstage and uh, we saw Al and he actually remembered me. I couldn't believe it. I was, I said, he's not going to remember me. He did. Uh, he gave me a huge hug. I'll never forget. I can still feel it. And um, I gave him a copy of that picture of us and he was very happy, mm -hmm. I thought, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, now let's go to Judy for a second. So you, you from a little kid wanted to be a performer. Right. right. And I had two examples. One who had succeeded and become a star. Well, actually he hadn't become a star yet, but he was about to. He was on, he was the, on the cusp of it. Yeah. And then, so well, let's, let's go a little chronological. So Judy, you were born where? Cuba. You were born in Cuba. Mm -hmm. And um, your family went, they didn't come straight to the United States. No, we went to um, Spain. Spain, and then you moved here, right? Mm -hmm. And you were, those pictures of you that I've seen in all those beautiful dresses your mother made, where you were singing, Judy was one of these, you know, you see these little kids on, um, on uh, like, uh, The Voice and all that that have these amazing talents, and you're like, oh, my God, that's just a little three or four or five-year-old. How can they sing like that? Judy was one of those kids in of her time. So she had this amazing voice, and you sang in Spanish, right? It was all Spanish songs? Um, yes. All Spanish songs. Yeah, we'd love to see those. Oh, my God, you've got to see this picture. She'll die. Yeah. She was a big ham. And your dad was smart and said, I have a talented kid. Here. <laughs> My dad was smart and was like, I can make money off of this kid. <laughs> right. Let's uh, see what we can do here. And he worked it. He worked the night scene. He worked like the clubs. <laughs> so he brought you to the clubs? You were the town. You were um, the actor. I don't think he brought me to the clubs until I performed. I actually don't even know how he sold me. He just, I don't really know no, what he sold. I mean, how he. Uh, no, right. Like I'm right. saying, I don't know how he sold the idea. The idea of this kid. Um, but he just, uh, he was just like, well, you have a show. And I'd be like, right, I'd just show up. And I'd be but like, you, okay. But you are, it still are one of these people. You know, some people can memorize. It takes me forever to mem memorize lyrics. But Judy can literally listen to something a few times and know all the lyrics. You have one of those auditory memories, right? Every All of your friends are always like, how do you know all the words to every song? Yeah, they call me a walking jukebox. Walking jukebox. Judy the walking jukebox. So as a kid, you were that kid that could listen to a, a Spanish song and just be able to sing it. But with passion, I've seen some of the pictures. Yeah. And um, so it would be all the different clubs that you would be at. And at what point did you, did you either decide you don't want to do that anymore? Or you, you know, just I think that, or? no, I think that as a kid, you just kind of do what your parents say. So I, I mean, I liked it. But I think I enjoyed it more when I was at home uh, doing it for my family because that they would make me do that too. Right. Like at every party and stuff, everybody would sit like in a circle and I, they'd put me on a box or whatever and I had to stand on top of the box. So I think that that, but then for, it was just kind of work. So I didn't really, I don't know, I don't think I enjoyed it as much until I actually, till years later when I was in high school and then I actually chose to do it. Right. Um, you know, okay. then I, so then that was a choice for you. Okay, so let's go back to Catherine for a minute. So your choice after high school was to go in, you went to acting, you studied acting, right? Right, I studied acting with Bob Modica, who was a protege of Sandy Meisner, who was uh, part of the group theater Let's bring up ago. our voices, because I have the AC on and the fan, because it's so hot in here. Okay. I want to make sure you're heard on the radio, so go ahead. Okay, so Bob, Robert X. Modica was a protege of uh, Sandy Meisner, who was part of the original group theater, and he and Lee Strasberg, oddly enough, broke off into their own acting studios. Um, Lee Strasberg did the actor studio, and Sanford Meisner did his own thing, and uh, I studied with Bob Modica, who was his protege. I, as a matter of fact, I found out that he was uh, pretty rough on women, uh, so I'm kind of glad I went with Bob, because Bob was really very gentle, and I studied with him for a while. I studied in college. And then all it took was a couple of really bad uh, auditions and, and casting calls. And the last one really broke my spirit. And that was with Maxine Marks, who is now, I think, an acting teacher. She's well, you still said alive. she was a grouch of Marks. No, Harpo Marks, oh. Harpo Marks's daughter. And she told me that I had an orange new face, that I needed to have an orange new body. And I explained to her that I was Italian. <laughs> and Hungarian. <laughs> and Hungarian. Right? But Italian is the one that likes to eat so much. 
and I, that was impossible to have an ingenue figure. And then she told me that I, I with yeah, my they're heavy, rough. They're rough. I tell you having New York accent, how could I do Othello? Like I was looking to do Othello. I know. I mean, it's ridiculous. Some, uh, I mean, people in this business, some people like how honest they can be, and, and others are like, I don't need this. I don't Crush need Crush my yeah. dream. Yeah, I mean, one of the guests we had on uh, who was um, – uh, Alex um, Alexander said that what you need to live in a city is a really tough skin. And I didn't have a tough skin. It's, boy, is that true. You need to really, because it's, I mean, some days you feel like you got punched in the stomach. So Judy said something before. About that. About why didn't you go on? Well, um, yeah, I guess I, I, I didn't go on because I don't like... Uh, I don't like to be told no, but also while I was listening to <laughs> and we were laughing, and then she said, "Why are you guys laughing?" Because anybody that knows Judy knows that that's true. <laughs> you don't tell Judy no, <laughs> right? And then also, I think I just didn't really want it to tell you the truth. I was Enough. just listening yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah you have to kind of want it, and I was just like, want, "But what part of it do you have to want?" I, I didn't want to do any of it. I just didn't want to. I really didn't think. I mean, I didn't want to perform. And then I thought, I, 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 don't, I definitely don't want to struggle. Like, if I have, if I have to be, a struggling artist is not appealing to me. <laughs> right. It's not I my, remember like, work, it's not I remember my... working in a butcher shop, talking about struggle. This was like the beginnings, and I was working in a butcher, a Bade's butcher. Bade's butcher, wow. And I was scrubbing the blocks, you know, with the salt and the, and the wire brushes. And I said, I, do I really want this that bad? And right. I went into advertising. Instead. Okay, yeah. so you went into advertising. And I stayed there for a while, and then I worked in nightclubs. I worked in the Cotton Club on 125th Street and 12th Avenue, where I heard Cap Calloway. And That's great. Uh, they wanted to try to recreate the Cotton Club of old. And I worked with Honey Coles. He, he taught me. He taught Dick Cavett and um, Woody Allen how to tap dance. And he took me to the old Smalls Paradise in Harlem with his 25 year old, uh, 25, his girlfriend of 25 years. And he taught me how to tap dance a little bit. And um, yeah, so I that's, did the that's some club. classic yeah. New York stuff. Yeah. But it's all, what people don't always know is how very difficult it is sometimes. Most of the time. I don't know too many people that don't struggle unless you come from, you know, you come from some serious money. And some people do, and that's great. And good for you. But uh, most of us don't. We come from, you know, regular beginnings, and we have to make our own money. So... Now, Judy, you did a lot of stuff in high school, and, and you love to sing. You're actually a great singer. But it was like, mm, not so much. No, and plus, I am uh, I'm stage, I have stage fright a little bit. Which people that, that know you would never believe that because you are very outgoing. Yeah. And you're really, like, in charge. Like, now you have your own business. I mean, I don't know that I would say I'm outgoing. Well, okay, you know what? You're right bold. about that. You're bold. You're right. Bold. That's a very right. good, I, I, that's true, because yeah. you can be like a little reserved. I, yeah, I am very reserved, actually. Um, and but you take, I won't talk, I mean, I, I, I'm not friendly. Like, you, you you, make conversation with everyone everywhere all of the time. I like the opposite. Right, I won't. <laughs> I am the total opposite you're, of that. You observe it, a lot. Yes, I observe, and it takes me a long time to become friendly with someone, and then I'm outgoing. But I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I, that's one of my attributes. I don't think. Okay. Well, that's an honest answer. Yeah. I appreciate that. But you are an incredible marketer. I mean, you can sell something. But that's Tell related me why it's to different. finance. Oh, okay. So that's related to my income. So, so you, I will, you know, okay, so come like, out of your shell. Right. right. <laughs> then so I will be. Now you have uh, degrees in marketing, I mean, in finance and accounting, right? Right. And you're going back to get your MBA. Right. And you're going to be teaching accounting as well. Right. Uh, that to me what makes me want to faint. Like when well, I think about that. Well, it makes me want to faint, yeah. actually. <laughs> I mean, when I think yeah. about that. I hope my students don't have any questions. <laughs> I don't know what the answer no is going to be. Sorry. <laughs> no questions. Let's just. Oh, not true. And we That's talk true. about this all, all the time because teaching is its own uh, animal, you know. Um, so, and you know, I because I teach performing arts and that's a whole different uh, ball of wax. But. So you guys, do you both feel that you made the right decision? Absolutely. You too, yeah. Catherine. Now, Catherine, you also, after the advertising, tell, tell everybody oh, well, what you I, did. I worked behind the scenes in show business. I worked at NBC for 27 and a half That's a years. big deal. Yeah. And, I, that and was, what did you do I, at NBC? I was an engineer, video tape engineer. And uh, I did a little uh, post-production, a little uh, CMX editing, which is probably no longer around. Jay Rivera says, I love you, Catherine Salvio. Hi, Jay. Oh, hey, how about me, Jay? <laughs> Chris DePiro said, oh yeah, now she's, Jay, you better hurry up and say you love her too. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mama, says Chris DePiro. He made, actually, Chris DePiro 
made a beautiful collage, video collage of my mother's pictures uh, uh, years ago as a gift. And for, thank you for my DVD. All right. And, so oh, I you got, got your DVD. I oh, Jay it. says, Judy, you too. Oh, okay. You rock, baby. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Jason yells out, you. Okay, thank God. Um, <laughs> Samuel Ruiz just joined. Samuel, hi, baby. Boy, can he sing. Uh, all right. Uh, Joe Savino has already shared our video. Thank you, Joe. I, I want to do a shout out to Carol Brooklyn because she oh, is out in Phoenix demonstrating right now. And she said she didn't know how to get on and everything. I said, oh. So, Look at that. Uh, I, so I, I want to talk about go back to Carol Brooklyn, but Lynn Portis is with us, Judy. I love your hi. hair. Oh, Look I love at it. that, my this sister. Your sister. Say your sister's Look, my name. Si um, Jizzy. Someone just wrote that they love my hair. My sister made me cut my hair in Mexico. Right. And um, and then I yelled <laughs> at her right. for like I don't know. At I yelled hair. at her for a little bit. I was like, Mah! I was so mad. She cut all my hair off, and now I'm like, oh, great. this is cute. I like it. I so we're it getting compliments on it. She almost cried. I made her feel so bad. Oh no. She was like, no, please. I'm so sorry. I just wanted you to cut off your dead ends. I was like, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> and you can be kind of scary. Yeah. Uh, but in a good way. It's all right. You get stuff done. All right. So Catherine, you worked as a video engineer right. for NBC for 27 years. Right. And you are both people that are good with your money. You're always saying to me, you got it. We don't have a retirement. What? You don't have a, that's what happens lots of times, kids, unless you're a big star. And which is why I didn't go into show business. Right. I don't have any retirement and I barely have a savings account. These two know what they're doing. So uh, I might take a page out of their book. Well, thanks to G splitting and splitting and splitting in those days. So, that, so that look, I'm going to, I'm going to come to your house. You're going to teach me how to do the stock market. Um, all right, so um, Arms Radio, thank you, Arms Radio has shared our video. So let me tell you how to get on, okay? I haven't done this yet. Some of you already know you've been on a million times, but if you want to listen to our show, there's a great app, app called TuneIn App. And when you get the TuneIn App, which is free, you either get it on your computer. It's actually called TuneIn Live. Oh, okay, TuneIn Live. Hi, Barbara Cavallo. There's my old therapist. Love her. Thank you for everything. Um, um, if you get the TuneIn Live app, uh, you can just click on it and type in armed, A-R-M-E-D radio. It's a picture of a girl, blonde hair and red lipstick, and you click on it. You can listen to us live on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. If you uh, miss us live, not a problem. You can go to Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, -E -E Spreaker app, and listen to us in podcasts and type in What's the Story with Maria, and it will come on. And so far we have five episodes and this one will be, and they're all archived. This one will be on in about, Jimmy's really good with it. He usually gets it done before the next day. It's amazing. I don't know how he does everything. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. He gets Hi, it Jimmy. done. So which, let me check in with Jimmy because maybe we'll go to commercial soon. Jimmy, how are we doing for commercial? Would you like to? Yeah, I think that would be, we'll take a moment and uh, we'll go to commercial. Okay, sweetie. So I think we'll be back. In a couple minutes, Jimmy's going to play our. Okay, who's going to play our sponsors? One of our sponsors is my cousin Joyce's um, hair salon in Everett, Mass. I think it's 132 Ferry Street in Everett. Uh, Joyce and Gina are there, uh, uh, and then we have uh, two other. They, we always have great sponsors, so please listen to the podcast because you'll hear our great sponsors, and those commercials are good too. I want to shout out to my sister's hair salon, which is European Flair. It's out in West Concord, Mass. My sister Carla owns that. And she and her husband, a happy 30th anniversary to them. They went to see the uh, eclipse. Oh, they I were love, in I St. Love, Louis. I love that picture of you at her wedding, at Carla's wedding. Oh, my wedding. God. I hated it. I loved, I it. Was, I loved, I loved it. it, too. You yeah. know why? Because I was all girled up. Yeah. And I, uh, when I see that, I'm like, oh, my God. All I remember about that day, well, I remember that I was really skinny. Yes. And I was really tanned because I used to yeah. go tanning. Back in the 80s, that's what we did. It was like, that's what you did. You'd go to the gym. And you'd go tanning in the same, and you know, and drink yourself to death. And did you have like time. one of these things, the reflectors? Uh, the no, reflector? we were inside. I used to put the little goggle oh, things you really on. really went tanning. And then, yeah, oh yeah, and then I dance, and then they play disco music, and we dance in there. And uh, so we were always tanned. But I remember my poor sister, when she put up, I was so, I don't drink anymore, thank God. But uh, back then, I used to drink quite a bit, and I was so, have, has anybody seen the movie 28 Days at that wedding? <laughs> That was me. So my poor sister. So when I see that picture, I'm like, oh, my God. I think, who else? Oh, Jean Simpson Dunn, one of my friends from high school. Hi, Jean. Uh, she lives in Illinois right now. And so shout out to her. Tracy McHugh. 
who else do we have? Michelle Pereira joined. She is a, Michelle, you should come on my show. Michelle is an amazing singer and she sings in English, of course, but she also sings in Portuguese and her album is beautiful. I didn't, I don't speak any Portuguese, but I love listening to Michelle Pereira's album. Is she Portuguese or is she Brazilian? Uh, I believe she's Portuguese. And uh, I was just in Portugal. Oh, you were. That's right. So you listen, you, uh, which brings me to this now. When we come back on, I want to talk about both of you love to travel. I am not a travel person. Maybe someday I will be. But they have been to many, many places and they travel a lot. So I, when we come back, I want to talk about that. Let's, um, Rina Cunhali, my cousin Rina. Um, yes, the Al Pacino movie, you can find it. I have it, Rina. I'll lend it to you. Uh, it's also on my acting reel. If you go to my acting reel, which is on my website, or just go to YouTube and type in Maria Gentile acting reel, it's one of the clips that comes on the Al Pacino movie that will come on. Um, Carol Brooklyn, there she is. Hey, Carol. Hi, I Carol. told Maria we hooked up today, and I told you how to come on. Carol's a you would love Carol is demonstrating in Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona right now. Thank you, Carol, for representing the resistance. Carol was, Corey Crane joined, Carol was an and a uh, New York Transit Police Lieutenant for many, many, many years. And we made a, a diversity video together. Uh, I played one of the cops and she of course uh, directed it. And um, she uh, has been through hell and back. And um, after September 11th, she moved out of the city. To Arizona. To Arizona. Now she teaches um, criminal justice. Uh, in Arizona, and she loves it, and I'm sure you're great. But she's lived in she lived in Florida. She was a private detective in Tampa for a long. She raised bulldogs. I think she still does that. Carol, you'll have to. She raised bulldogs, uh, bred bulldogs, and uh, now she's a teacher in the university. I like mojitos. Oh, I like mojitos. That's funny. <laughs> Joe, I just got of it. Of course you do, Joe. I wonder if they have a. He loves slush too. He always talks about slush. He loves that. I wonder if they have the mojito slush, Joe. Joe rocks. Joe Rocks has his show on Thursday nights at, I believe it's 10 p.m., if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to be coming back in soon. Jimmy will let us know. So um, next week on our show, uh, we have, it's our British Appreciation Day. We're going to have Penny James oh. of Penny James Salon. Uh, and um, Will T. N. Hall, who is a musical director, he's also British. So we have two Brits on. You have to behave next week. These are proper people. So no swearing. <laughs> we're, we're not so proper. Yeah, no, we're not so proper at all. So we're going to have uh, those guys on, and they're great. And they, they bring uh, – Brit. I love my Brits. They bring a whole different element to anything. So um, do you guys want to say hi to oh, Maria D'Amato Boreski? Uh, we grew up together. Lynn Portis is back on there, Corey Crane. Uh, do you guys want to shout out to anybody that might be watching? Uh, well, I want to um, uh, wish my mom an uh, early happy birthday. Because uh, it's her birthday on Saturday. She's Happy a Leo birthday. too, like my mom. No, she's a Virgo. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, like you, so you both Virgos? Yeah. Well, wow. I'm on the cusp going the other way. I'm the last day of Virgo, and she's on the cusp of uh, Leo. Leo. Yeah. You're on the cusp of Libra, like me. And you're gonna your birthday's coming up in October. That's right. Le my birthday's coming up in September. It's gonna be Virgo. It is Virgo season. Oh, not yet. I think tomorrow starts Virgo season. Tomorrow starts Virgo season, and then segue into Libra season. Libra season. Get ready. Get your checkbooks out because Libras like pretty presents. <laughs> Leah Sutton just joined. Leah Sutton was one of the first people I ever met in New York City. She was Mario Cantone's manager. Mario Cantone and I are friends from high school, and Leah was his manager. I was so sorry that Mooch, the Mooch left because I thought Mario Cantone. He did a great job. He would have been able to do that role. Yeah, but you know what? He'll revamp it. Well, Mario does something every single day. He's doing something. Patricia Powell uh, just joined us. She and I worked together when I first moved to the city. Yeah, Leah Sutton discovered everybody. I mean, all these comedians are amazing. And she, I think we can, we can all be seen. I don't know if we, uh, we'll come back in soon. Jimmy will let us know. So um, we're going to talk tonight, before we um, segue off, we're going to talk about Cuban food tonight because now we're going to talk about traveling and all the places that these young ladies have been. Uh, I mean, we could start to do that soon. But So what, tell me about the next place you're going, Judy. Uh, I'm not really doing anything uh, out of this world. I'm just going to Florida. To my fav That's where I'm going to be a shout-out to, my favorite gym place in the universe. 
It's What's located it in Florida. And I Where travel in Miami Lakes, Florida. It's called the Perfect Circle. And I uh, literally travel there as much as I can just so I can work out there. Because the owner, Bertha, um, is really inspiring. And I, I just love to work out there. So I've slimmed yeah. down I, when I you walked have. in. Catherine, um, noticed, Catherine noticed, and it really it's just because I, I love, I, I do like four classes a day when I go, and I try to go for at least four days. And so I'm um, going Labor Day weekend, then I'm going to go two weeks later, again, just for a short weekend, um, and that's it. I'm going to California for my birthday. California um, is beautiful. We love I love California. Have you been to California? Oh. I love yeah, California. It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Uh, with my friend uh, Marcy, we're going to Laguna Beach. Um, and then I am going to uh, California again in December for a few days and then off to Hawaii. Also, if you are in the LA area, my friend Richard Falzone owns a great restaurant with tremendous history. He'll tell you all about it. It's called Off Vine and it's on Leland Avenue. Uh, it's called Off Vine in the LA area. So look him up, and if you go to see, uh, if you're in L.A. and you go to see Richard Falzone at Off Vine, tell him that Maria Gentili sent you. And I'm going to Cancun, which is kind of boring to me because I like to travel to well, exotic places. But I've been, you love the beach, right? But that's where Judy's sister lives, right? Yes, I was just, I was just there. I was Maybe just I, in Cancun. I'm stay, is she on? She's right there. Yeah. Oh, hi. I'm coming in uh, last week of September. First week of October. Oh, so maybe you guys can see yeah. each other. Yeah, definitely. I'm staying in the Ritz Carlton. I'm going in the style that your sister likes. That's right. Yeah. Because I got a good deal. See, I like first class, but I like to get good deals. So. And I like first class, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. If I get a good deal, I get it. <laughs> well, that's own. what happens when you go into accounting <laughs> yeah. and finance instead of the arts. That's right. You know that's what? That's right. That was you a can, smart decision. On her yeah, part. you can figure out how to get a good deal. She on came this. in today. I thought it was Stephen Mucci's wife. She said, I bought these sunglasses, I got these shoes, I got this bag, I got this. Oh, oh, oh has she been on the news? I haven't, you know, I haven't watched the news in a couple of days. Ah, I please. just like, sometimes I got to turn it off. And everybody that knows me knows that I'm a news junkie. I have to tell you, I was in Mexico for the weekend, a few weekends ago, uh, or last weekend. I forgot when. Um, and the Mexican people are the sweetest, the nicest, <laughs> most <laughs> loving Sorry. people. Um, and it's just so horrible that you hear that people generalize you know when they generalize uh, you know countries and you know of course that there's crime the crime is mostly um you know at the border you know because of the drugs that are being transported for the people that use drugs in america you know so i mean if there wasn't anyone to consume the drug then there wouldn't be as much you know people selling supply it. demand. it's, it's well, I mean, supply demand. Every, I mean, but the, the i loved i loved mexico i loved everyone was so sweet everyone is so nice i mean i think it's a, one american dollar equals 17 some almost 18 mexican pesos mm -hmm. um and just i i really learned so much about their culture like they don't have any oil refineries there so they you know, we get our a lot of our oil from Mexico, so they they sell the oil to us, um, and, and then we it. refine it for them, and they sell we sell it back to them, and, and, and of course at, a, at making a profit. And then you know, I mean, that's you know, you can't you can't uh, hate us for making a profit. I mean, I think that's more of a Mexican government thing because they're they don't want to spend the money in making refineries because they don't care. They're rich, you know. It hurts the people. Uh, but when you see things like this and you travel to so many places, you really, I, I always come home very grateful that we live in a country that you're able to really make something out of nothing. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of places you can't. You have nothing and you're going to stay with nothing. They don't have the opportunity that we have. But it also makes me grateful because I see the, the delicacy in, or how delicate it is. The, the situation is and how easy we can lose it just because we have it doesn't mean we're always going to right. we just take it for granted because we have supposedly a check and balance system that will keep and we're coming back in and that we, i want to hear what yeah. judy what judy was talking about uh while we were um with our sponsors and we stayed on facebook live was that she just went to mexico her sister lives there and how beautiful the people are there and how it's very it's a very delicate thing that's happening and there's a, please uh, go to our Facebook Live when, when this is over. I'll record it. I mean, I'll save it and then you can listen to what she was talking about. And it's just a very delicate thing, you know. Uh, and I, 
politics in general is a, is is very is delicate, very delicate. Sure and I think that uh, I think the most important thing for us as humans and us as people of a country to 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 learn um, is that you cannot you have to judge a person by that person that you on can an individual basis. on an individual yes. basis I agree and i am i am a total extreme believer in if if someone you know of any race does it, you know isn't worth you know your while then you you cut them off. It doesn't mean you're going to cut every single Cuban off, every single Mexican off. Every, every Italian. I mean, that's just an ignorant way of thinking. And uh, it's it's just, you know, you, it's, it's, I can't. I mean. I know, it's a lot. There's a lot going on. And I, I believe, I agree. You have to take people at face value. Every person, um, every person is an individual and, and treat them as such. And, and I mean, I, I had, I just have to tell you this really quick yeah, story. Sure. My, the last day I was there, um, I had a cab driver. We, we, we spent the day at the hotel uh, where my niece works. And um, then my, I was with my aunt and my sister's mom. So my sister's same father, different mom. She's also Cuban, but then she you know, migrated to Mexico and she stayed there. And so we let the older women have their own cab and go home because they were tired. They can't walk. And I needed to go shopping because it was my last day there. Of course you could go shopping. <laughs> of course I needed to go shopping. So Jeffrey I, Campbell, we agree with you. Teaching is not all that different from performing. You are right. Yes. And Catherine she, is a legend. Lynn Ford as well. She is. Alleged. So tell us. So um, I, uh, I I asked the cab driver how much he would uh, charge me from where I needed you know where I needed to go, but I needed to make one small stop, and he said three hundred pesos, which is actually like um, I don't know forty bucks or something like that, right? So I was like, okay, fine. But this cab driver ended up being the sweetest thing ever, and he made like seven stops with me. He he took me to the mall, got off of the got off with me, went inside shopping with me. Then took me to this place to buy. I'm gonna say this wrong. I hope my sister's listening. Mar 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 Marquistas or something like that. It's like this we this like bread with cheese and like uh, condensed delicious. milk inside. Oh, we gotta talk about a food before we something talk. like that. He got off there. I bought him that. I bought him something else. I bought. I went inside a church and I bought something for my mom. He was so sweet. And um, and I it was my last night there, so I wasn't gonna use the pesos anymore. I ended up giving him like I think. It was 300 pesos, and I ended up giving him like 1,100 pesos because that was all the money I had, yeah. so I just gave it to him. He was so grateful, and he was so – it was just such an amazing experience. And now, I mean, I, I really don't think – and they love their country. You know, they, they, they're like, oh, this place is beautiful. This place is beautiful. Unfortunately, there's a lot of crime here. Well, the same there's, thing in America. I mean, there's high crime areas, and there's uh, beautiful areas. Right. I think every country has – Places that you you know are are more riddled with crime, and I I think it's important to look at the whole of something before you and any of us judge anybody. So um, and I just and I've been going to Cuba for the last. Uh, Catherine's been to Cuba how many times? Three times now, and I'm so upset that things are changing. That I I spoke to my friend down in well, Cuba. I spoke to my friend down in Cuba, and he said the changes that should come through in September because as of now, nothing has happened. It's different. Americans are still going, but come September, they're going to have new, new rules and, and new uh, restrictions. So I'm upset about that because it was nice going. I, I took the inaugural flight from New York to Havana in December, and it was great. You know, to have a direct flight from New York was fabulous. Yeah. So I, I'm, I know. I'm All right. Just, speaking of Cuba, Judy, let's get our food. All right. So our food today, you know, we, here we come to the part of the show called Go Ahead, Keep Eating. Because we talk about food on the show because we all love food. Well, I do, and so my guests join me in that. Today, Judy brought, and I'm going to bring this down. You're going to tell us what you brought today. So this is... Picadillo. Picadillo, and it, it is what? How do you make picadillo? It's ground beef, olives, capers, raisins, potatoes, <laughs> tomato sauce, onions, sofrito, which is onions and green tomato and... I'm sorry, not green tomato. Uh, green pepper and red pepper and... Like that. So this is rice. These are uh, fried plantains. So this is one of my favorites. And I brought these guava and cheese pastries just because that's also so Cuban. So um, these, that's I tradition. made some yesterday for my house, and I was going to bring it here today, but we ate it. So I had to. I <laughs> had to, to go, I had go, to go buy this. Yeah. Go ahead. So that is uh, our food that we uh, talked about today: a Cuban cuisine, picadillo, P-I-C-O. How do you spell deal? Pica. 
P I C A G A I L L O. Okay, so if you go to a Cuban restaurant, you definitely want to order that. And boliche, I love boliche too. Yeah, my aunt wants to make oh that. Oh my God, that's so good. So there's a, you should check out the Cuban restaurants. They're delicious. And all the different, there's so many different foods from different countries. Even though they all speak Spanish, that doesn't mean their foods. There's kind of similar, some of them, but there's a, a big difference between, say, Colombian food, right? And Cuban food. Yeah. And Mexican food and uh, Dominican food. Well, Mexico has a lot of tacos. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I was like kind of sick of the tacos after. After a while, well, enough with the tacos. Yeah. They have a lot of all types of different tacos. That's their thing. That's their thing. Yeah. Tacos. Okay. Well, just like Italians have pizza, that's right thing. We love mm, pizza and pasta. Yeah, love Judy pizza. loves Italian food. So uh, let me see. We have about eight minutes left. So I talked about my mom in the go ahead. You want to jump no, in? I, want, I wanted to say something. I, yes, I was please. very touched by your story about your mother, and um, and I just wanted I mentioned it on on one of my uh, posts that uh, your mother would be very proud of the woman you've become and Thank how, you. how well loved you are. I told I told Judy one day. I said Maria is beloved, and then she said, "You and I are not beloved. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maria that, is well, beloved. I you and I." That. Not so much. Is beloved. I don't know if I'm beloved. I don't know if I need to be beloved, but I love my friends. I know yeah. that. And I, I try to put my best foot forward always. Uh, and uh, I do have so many just incredible friends that I've met in the city and uh, in Massachusetts and other places. So I, I really, I love that you guys are coming on every week. This is like so amazing that you keep coming back week after week and checking out our show. Now, remember that you can please actually go listen to it in podcast so you can hear our sponsors, you know, because uh, we want to make our sponsors feel appreciated. And, and we do appreciate that they come on and and uh, promote the show. So go and listen to it on Spreaker.com. Type in What's the Story with Maria, and you will have a chance to, uh, to listen to us in podcast, which is actually, I like it almost better because, like, I play it in the car, and I can listen. I listen to every single thing. I'm not distracted by the other stuff or the visuals at all, you know? So uh, also to recap, uh, if you like the portrait of my mom, let me bring that back. Hold on. If you like the portrait of my mom. Oh, I want to I want to say something before we go off the air. Yeah. If all of you are watching, Marie and I were talking before the show, and we want to try to make one of her dreams a reality. Maria wants to have her own club. That's my biggest dream and ever, to I have think, my own I think club. she should do it. And... And all of you. And I'm ready. Today, yeah, and, I've decided and I'm ready. You, and we're going to start looking for a location. Because yes, we, we are. We have to make this dream come true. And Thank all you. of you that believe in her like we believe in her, just keep encouraging her to do it. And and I know Penny, who's coming on next week, wants to, wants her to do it also. And Penny, yeah, she'll talk about how she started. took a Well, you started. Judy has been a big inspiration as well because Judy – you really, I mean, not to call it out, but you, you came from very humble beginnings. And you made yourself, you have your own company. And that's like nobody handed you $14 million. Nobody handed you a million dollars. You earned every penny. And I just think that's amazing. And you have your own company. And I'm very inspired by you. I want to tell you that. Thank you. And uh, Catherine, you are like a whip with finance. You know your well, stuff. I told you what my gift is. It's tell me I'm your not- gift. I'm, I like to make things happen for other people, and I want to make that dream come true for you. I want to help you put that club together. I want it to be something where Darius comes and plays, Darius Frown. Michael Isaacs. Will, Michael Isaacs. I want everybody to will, come to Marie's. I said we should call it What's the Story with Marie? Oh, that's what Catherine said today. Yeah, I said that, that would so be great. Thank you, Rory. Thank you, Rory. I'm putting it out there. One Julie White. Hi, One Julie White. I'm putting it out there in the universe because these girls have done great things and I'm inspired by them. I, yes, I would love to own my own nightclub in the city. We can do the radio show from there. Yeah, we can do the radio show from there. How fun would that and, be? And, you know, Joe Rocks gets free drinks. And, Joe, can we do a call-in session with Maria on the radio show? Are you listening? Yeah, I think, I think I that'd think. be great. I think Maria could carry the whole show by herself one night, just doing questions in, from the radio. So we're putting it out there. We're going to get the wheels going. I'm going to try to get that to happen this year. And also Shanna Sharp, our friend Shanna Sharp is so inspiring. She has her own um, bar and it's amazing. And Michael and LaRue. Michael LaRue. So we've had people that I'm trying to, uh, you know, Wow, my, my own sister's ass. typing in English. Look at that. I love you too. Oh, Cindy, Cindy, uh, 
from Massachusetts. She and Rhea are out there in Massachusetts. We love you girls. They come into the club. Yeah, it's time. I'm at that age where I, I'm ready for the, the, not even the next chapter of my life. I'm ready for a new book, a big book. And listening, I mean, listen, owning your own company is so freeing because you kind of just, um, you're the boss and that's it. You can go away whenever you want. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want. I mean, I can't imagine ever working for anyone. Yeah, well, my, you know what's funny? You're like my dad in a lot of ways. Just I funny. always say this. Yeah, that, you know. Um, and my dad worked for a couple people here and there. And I remember being a, a pretty little kid and my dad said, you know what? I don't want to work for anybody else. I'm, I'm over it. I want to work for myself. And, uh, and he did. And um, he owned his own shop for a long, long time until just, he just like sold it to my sister a few years down the road. And my sister is, um, has her own shop. And I, I'm really impressed with people that have their own businesses. So it's time for me to have my own business and I'm putting that out into the universe. So I'll be, um, I'll be um, starting that ball rolling. Catherine's going to help me find some locations. And Judy's going to be on board with helping out with stuff. The finance. The finance. Yeah. You, yeah, you, you because you I know how to put it together. That, that part. So I think that's the key too, kids. Um, hi Rona. Rona in, uh, has joined us. Hi Rona. Ryan Bristol has joined us. So um, I think that's the key too, to know that like that you're not going to be good at everything. Uh, I'm good with people. I'm good with front of the house. I'm good with getting talent. I'm good with customers. I can. Uh, I have a following. I, I like to think I have a following. I know I do, and so I'm good with that stuff. Am I good with the other stuff? Might maybe not so that's much. That's when you hire. Other people. That's when you hire other people. So that's what I'm putting out into the universe. Um, and we'll, we'll come up with a name I say, and all that stuff. let Billy Goffey handle the bar food. Yeah, just light bar food. Oh, Billy Goffey um, with his biscotti. Louise Cormier, uh, I went to high school with her. Hi, Louise. She's so sweet. Her brother was really sweet. He is really sweet, too. Um, and, um, okay, so next week, Penny James, inspirational British um, salon owner, uh, hairdresser to the stars, and Will Tien Hall is going to be on our show. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course. And we're going to sign thank off. You. We're going to thank our engineer, Jimmy. Thank Thanks, you so Jimmy, very much. Jimmy. Thank you, Joe Rocks, for um, thinking that this would be a good idea because I'm having the time of my life. Today was such a hard day in the city. It was so hot. So I'm sorry. I'm a little uh, I'm a little for calamity. For calamity today. But I'll be back next week. I will bounce back. Thank you, Judy Mesa of Mesa One Management is the name of her company. Catherine Salvio, remember that name. Uh, a shout out to Aunt Salvio, her beautiful Hungarian mother. Happy birthday, Anne. We will see you soon. We love you guys. Come back next week. Okay? Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.